Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on when you're watching this. I am so excited to be here. My name is Pamela Broussard, and I am thrilled to be a part of this conference, Virtual ELL 2020. I have followed this conference since its first year and saw so many great presenters, referred other people to it, and so to be a part of it and getting this opportunity to share with you during this time is really a thrill for me. So I thank you, um, Ton, and I thank you, Carol, for inviting me. And there's just so many awesome speakers that you want to go to check those guys out and the other, the other sessions. Maybe I should do this or this. I don't know, wherever they are. And uh, so make sure you go check those guys out because this is really some really great content that's going to be shared this uh, today throughout and throughout the day. The, all the videos will be live for later uh, or be available to see later too. So if you can't see them all today, you can come back later. So I'd like to go very quickly through to my presentation because we just have a lot to cover. All right, so let me get this up and running. Sorry about that. And here we go. All right. So my, my presentation today is creativity for connecting. Using creativity for communicating and community building online. And don't worry, whenever you say creativity, though, people who are not, who feel like they're not creative, all of a sudden panic, like they can't do it. Um, and so don't worry, you don't have to know how to do art of any kind to be able to do this, uh, these projects with your students. So they'll be the creative ones, they have it. And for those who feel like they can't do it either, no worries, There's, these are easy, no prep or low prep activities. So um, we'll be on our way. So my name is Pamela Broussard and I am the founder of a uh, Facebook group, Leading ELLs. You can get a hold of me on Twitter at Leading ELLs too. Facebook is the easiest way to get a hold of me and to find me. So come on over there and you'll see you there. So I wanna start with the premise that students want to belong and they wanna communicate who they are. They wanna feel part of something. They wanna feel accepted and loved. They want to feel like they fit in. And, and we all do, it's not just students. I mean, everyone wants to feel that. And right now, because of the isolation that many students are feeling, they really don't feel that. So how do we re really build that back into our programs? If you ask students how they're doing right now, the most common responses will be, oh, I miss my friends, I don't get to see anyone, there's nothing to do. And you, it's all disconnection is really what they're saying. I'm not connected. And even with all this technology, um, I find that even the adult friends are not reaching out as much. We've become, people are starting to get into ruts and then you get the negative self-talk and, and so students are going through all those kinds of things right now too. When I ask them, are you talking to friends? Are you doing stuff? Most of my students who are new arrivals are not. They're still being very, very isolated. So how can, what can we do? Art has always carried the story of the time. And what I mean by that is if you look throughout history, if you want to know about a civilization, if you want to know what people were thinking or doing, and very easy ways to go through the art. Arts have always told the stories of what people are thinking or feeling in a given uh, time. And so this is exciting because even though we're online and, and we feel like we're super limited, there are still ways for us to connect using the arts. And it's one area that I find a lot of teachers don't, don't naturally tend to go to. Again, if you want to know about society, you look at cavemen drawings all the way to Picasso, and these tell stories. Why did the art change? What are they trying to say? Why did they choose these colors? And you're gonna find that our students are doing those same things now. They are creating, they are using their voice. They want to belong to TikTok. They want to be known. They want to have YouTube videos. Students are expressing themselves and their opinions in all these different creative ways, and their voices are really, really wanting to be heard. Um, and so as teachers, we can give them that opportunity. When you look at these six pictures here, or these six pieces of art, you probably don't in your mind first go, oh, that's art. No, that's logos. But these were particularly designed with colors and shapes in mind. They are brands. and what 
when we think of branding, branding is a lot of money and time goes into branding products because they wanted people to connect to it and they want it to have a message. They want to be able to recognize it instantly. Our kids do too. They want to be recognized. They want to have a connection. They want you to know their stories. They want to know somebody cares. Now, what those stories are and what they mean is different to each person. For example, if you see this and you are three years old, it means a free prize. You don't really care about the hamburgers or even the prize. You want to either go play on a, on a playground or you want French fries or you want a free prize. But if you're 21 and you see this symbol, it's, it's where you can get food at two o'clock in the morning after a rock concert. And so it has a different meaning, a different value. Um, this piece of art, but there's a connection to it. There's a story to it. it. It's recognized. And that's what we want to build with our students. We want to build a connect, a story. We want our kids to feel recognized, to feel known, and have something behind it. So part of what classroom teachers can do right now is to build the brand. What does it mean to, for a student to be at Sci Falls High School? Um, what does it mean to be in the NAC program or even smaller down to your own classroom? If I say, oh, you're this kind of student or you're, oh, you're from South Falls, what does that mean? What is the brand that um, you can promote? You can help create the ethos, the connection of the brand and the audience. And what I mean here is the community and what it means where each person has their own space and voice and they're respected in your classroom and how can you do that with very little language at the beginning of the year or when people are super shy um, and their trust isn't built up well i believe that art's a great way to do that other ways where you can build community and i'm not going to go through all these because um, there's there's lots of great things on this today and other presenters and again i'll be doing i well i haven't told you yet but i will be doing a three hour presentation on this very soon. Um, but building community at level one, at the surface level, you have the tangibles, you have the t-shirts, the pencils, the lanyards, the pens, the stickers. You can build that for your students right now. We always get t-shirts donated for our kids. We ask for the last year's t-shirts after the football game. Our kids don't care that they're from the other football game from a year before. They don't know the difference. They just like this as Eagles on it. Um, we ask clubs to donate t-shirts. Right now, maybe you can't get in your building, but you can get pens or postcards, you can get stickers, um, things that will say, hey, you're a part of this. You're a part of our school. You are an eagle, you are a cougar, you are a um, lion, whatever your mascot is, that you are one of us. And immediately getting that brand out there to your kids so that they're a part of something. This summer when I did some, this at the end of the school year, when things went online, I, we had our own. We, had a, we were the ant club and we talked about we're ants, we work hard um, in the summer, so we're ready for the winter. We're gonna work hard through all of this. And just building a brand where I'm connected. Um, you also can use um, online things uh, like photo collages, emojis, animals, superheroes. If you don't want kids to use their faces, you can say, what animal do you represent? Using visuals to help represent your class as a whole, however you want to do that, flip grids, and then building traditions, traditions with in your classroom, joke of the day, meme Monday, uh, your special clap, clap, snap when you leave, whatever is your, um, something that you're going to do traditionally that's just like an inside joke. So that's what only your group knows and you're building those traditions. Um, we did challenges of the week where we um, had physical challenges, for example, who can hold a spoon on their nose the longest, things like that. Um, we had a theme day, you know, crazy hair day, those kinds of things. So those are kind of surface level building the community. But then there's a second level, and that is working towards common goals, having shared experiences, and personal connects. And I'm not going to go through all of these today. I'm going to flip right all the way down here to creative expressions through art, music, and photos. And that's what we'll be talking about today. So what are some creative things that you can do with English language learners at the beginning of the year? Well, this particular project 
I did it at the end of my, well, in March, I, that was at the end, but we'd already established community. I wouldn't start with this project. I'd start with some of the other ones, but I wanted to show you this pro project because it's the one we did first. The Gettysburg Museum Challenge was on um, Twitter. The Gettysburg Museum uh, sent it out. You can look it up. There's articles all, all around about it. But they challenge you to create works of art from common objects that you could find in your home. So find a famous piece of art and then things using things that lot in your house, go ahead and recreate those. So here was one that they did and another. And these are examples. There are hundreds of examples of these on online. Just go to Gettysburg, uh, at Gettysburg Museum and see the challenge. I love this one because you got the dog just laying out there. Um, and so students who don't want to show their faces and they don't want to physically be in it, they can do objects like this um, or they can do full out dramas like this one. And I love, this is how I felt, you know, like I just want to go far away and I just going to go to the shed in my backyard. Um, but that speaks a lot, it speaks a lot about what I'm thinking about, what I'm, what matters to me. When I started this project with my students, I just wanted them to have something fun, creative, out of the box to do. Um, to break up the monotony and the boredom. Um, but what I found, it was a lot deeper than that. I had told them to find a famous piece of art online and create it with items that they have in their home. And this is what they came up with. Um, this student is a student who doesn't talk a lot in my class. And right away, she responded to this. This is a beautiful thing. She put a lot of work into this. And she was able to talk to me about this piece, why she did this piece. She talked to me one-on-one. -on -one. She didn't present this to the whole class. She shared the artwork. She wasn't talking. Um, some people have thought that, that they do, both women have on two shirts. So this is a skin colored shirt, but it's two shirts. So no worries. Uh, here's another one that my students did. Love this piece here. Why does it matter? What is, what's the use of this? Your principal comes in or someone sees your Zoom and says, why are you doing arts and crafts? Why are you doing the you know, art projects? You're supposed to be teaching language. This is thinking outside the box. When we think about survival, the number one trait of people who, if you study surviving, um, which is what all of our kids are trying to do right now, is be able to think outside the box, to be able to think of things in new ways. So the idea that they're building these thinking skills of how to create, she didn't have a bird in a cage, but she did have a dog in a laundry basket. And she's building memories, she's creating something. How are these similar? How are they different? For those of you with higher language skills, you can go all over the place with these, but they're meaningful because the students have created them. This one here, when this one came in, I realized really quickly I needed to talk to the student. And this is a student who showed me in art what he would never have been able to say and start the conversation with me had we been just face to face. This was a great, great conversation starter. And we were able to just really assess where he was emotionally during COVID, how he was feeling, the kinds of things he was thinking and had deep, meaningful conversations about this. This piece got published in um, a newsletter. So we're really excited about that, which also um, gave him a lift um, in his spirits and in his mood. Um, this one was created and copied actually, but created by one of my students who's really, really funny in my class and likes to be funny. And so this is the screen. This is a student who was breaking up, uh, not breaking up, but is separated from her boyfriend right now. Uh, so I think she's lovely, gorgeous girl. So this one was the shock and just a lot of fun. This one here created a lot of discussion. It was really a great discussion around this piece that we had as a class. This is a student who typically doesn't speak out a lot in class and doesn't share her emotions a lot in class. But this piece was really powerful and the students got it and she got it. What I loved about it is she found herself in a piece of art. She was honoring her culture in, in this piece of art and also in the way that she dressed. And um, she was able to express deep feelings that she probably wouldn't have brought up in class in a regular assignment, even a writing assignment. And here's another. And of course, you've always got this guy, the funny guy and the guy who's just, you know, making this. I love this piece. I guarantee you he'll talk about this at Christmases and Thanksgiving dinners in the future, or there'll be a day this story will come up again. And again, you're just trying to build memories, connections with other students and the laughter 
you know that kids learn better when they're happy, 30% more success rate. The next thing we did, another project we did was 15 things. Uh, Katie, um, I posted on this, I think Carly, maybe Jody too, also posted photos and they inspired me. And I was like, I wanna do this with my kids. Um, I called it 15 things. I don't know what the original name of it was. I believe it was based though off of this photograph of this book by Greg Segal called Daily Bread. This photographer went around the world and took pictures of what children eat in a typical week in different countries. It was adapted during the COVID time of what are the 15 things around you? Um, and I, that was a challenge that I gave to my students. So 15 things was the name of this project. This little boy right here, this adorable little guy, two years old. At first I was like, why are you? Know, I wasn't expecting to see other people besides my students in the photos, but this little boy was the center of his world right now. He's two years old. He showed up to lots of our Zoom meetings. He had a lot to say in languages that we didn't understand, but he talked a lot in our Zoom meetings and was often have, had to be muted because he wanted to participate so much. Um, but these are things that this student had. Here's another student, what are the things you can do, what is similar, what is different. If you wanna tear it apart academically and go for it. That was not my goal. My goal was just to discuss it at a very casual level, just to do an emotional check-in and to just see where people are at and what they were thinking. This one here, I really love too, because here, makeup, something that I never really talk about in my classroom, but yet it's a big interest of students in my room. Uh, the cleaning, the cooking, the gar playing games. Students saw this, what did they have that was the same, what was different? But most of all, just expressing what's of value to her, what's important and what's her, going on in her life right now. When this student turned his in, I was disappointed. I was like, you know, you're really smart. Why did you not understand the directions? Why did you not follow? It was not like him. He's a straight A kid, so why did you not follow the rules? And then I started thinking about it. Like, he is working 12 and 14 hour days cleaning using these big machines. That is his 15 things. He has no time for any of those videos and playing and cards and he's working, he's trying to save up some money. And so he's working just really uh, um, many, many hours. And so this was his thing. So even that tells a story, helps people connect. He has the ability to share, hey, I'm working, which inspires other kids to work hard. Um, the third project I did with my students and again, these aren't in the particular order, but was a view outside my window. This was a flip grid assignment. Pick your favorite window. Why do you like it? Describe five things you can see from outside of your window, living and not living. Who do you see from your window? What, are they, what do they do? And how is the view different at different times of the day? So um, I'm careful about too much. Uh, I don't want to do a lot always inside of a house because there's some um, equity issues there but outside the house I feel it's fair game and the students can show whatever they want to show it didn't have to be their own things it's what they actually see and so this was a fun project if we have time I'll let you listen to my students feedback but this was a great great discussion again you can do compare contrast you can ask all sorts of questions um, you can have students interview each other watch and comment on each other's video but just another window into their lives and into each other's world. And the fourth project is one that I'm really excited about. I will be um, implementing this when we go back. It's based on a new book that's not even out yet by an artist named April Murphy. It's called Three to Five Words. She is a local artist here in Houston and she's she is this book is going to the publisher this week or next. It should be finished and out on the market in September or October. And what she did was collect three to five words that she's heard during the COVID. So what are words and phrases that you've heard over and over during this time? She is a happy person. She makes beautiful, bright art, and she makes joyful art. And so her art, when you go to the websites and you look at her work, you'll see that it's always bright, always colorful, and usually humorous. So here's flattening the curve, Here's can't log in. How many times have we all said that with a Zoom meeting um, that we, we're trying to get to? Up and up and down days. 
And again, even though these are hard times, she's able to see them in a different way. Now, when I threw, threw this out with the, to the kids, the kids that responded did not understand the irony of the comments of the artwork. Um, I wasn't able to communicate that because I just sent them a message, hey, would you like to respond to this? And they did. And so it wasn't, I didn't even talk to them face to face or Zoom. And so I don't know if it would, re if students would respond differently ha if I talked to them live. But here's how one student responded. This is Tom Pham and he is already a good artist. And I, when I read this at first, that um, I feel so peaceful. I thought, well, not many people are feeling peaceful right now. And we don't hear that. And then I thought, wait, I remember at the beginning of COVID, we talked about that a lot, how peaceful the cities were and how quiet they were and how the rivers were replenishing and becoming clearer and the animals were coming out. So that's how he's viewing COVID. That's what he's remembering from this. Um, another one that a student wanted to do the same project. He wanted to do it um, electronically. He did this on his iPad. See, it's open. And you see the different expressions here. Is all this purple stuff around here? Is that just artistic license? Is that COVID? I'm not sure. There's clouds here. A lot to discuss here and that he can present. This one, I didn't have a chance to meet back with her, but she, I, so I think it's actually a, just a bad translation. She says, let's stop looking guilty nations. And I think what she wants to say is stop blaming different nations. And you see a lion here, you see someone being eaten by it, uh, you see money involved and pointing arrows and crowds of people that out faces. You see, there is so much to talk about in here and she can share it, people could share it, they could talk about it and there's just a lot going on there. But this is what she's remembering and you see this very ugly part of COVID that definitely has been um, disappointing for us to have to go through don't go outside this is probably what this is one of my favorite i don't know if this kid knows how much i love pupusas and he's trying to make me happy um, but this is pupusas versus the curve and the question he heard and the words he heard the most is which one is flatter so we talk a lot about flattening the curve flatten the curve um, which is the flat pupusas for those of you who don't know what a pupusa is it is um a breaded Ah, uh, how do I say it? it's not bread, it's um, masa with like cheese and beans inside. It's really nice. Um, it's from El Salvador and I really, really love it. But again, you see he's bringing in his culture, he's bringing in his voice and he can talk however much he wants to talk about his project there. But again, a fun way to talk about COVID um, without it being a really, really heavy um, again, I would look back at this student and I would reach back out to her and say, Hey, how's it going? Talk to her about it. What's, you know, is this, what have you heard? What do you mean by this? And I would investigate it, um, privately, uh, with her. And, um, sorry, I would put my timer on. I would investigate it privately. Um, and talk to her about it and then if we and then talk to it um, in the class publicly if she's comfortable doing that but again just another way to hear and see what kids are thinking um, during this time so why art it's problem solving it's critical thinking it tells a story and it brings us together these projects did not take a lot of money and take time kids could perform them in whatever the way they wanted they were done in different weeks. We didn't do them all. I mean, it's one of these kinds of projects per week we did, but they were really great ways to start conversations and to let students get involved and start to build community and experiences together. If you wanna go deeper um, and you wish you had a curriculum for, your, uh, for SEL, there is uh, an organization called the U School and it's they are really producing some great work on how to have deeper conversations with students they prepared it they have all the materials they have lots of free materials on their site here um, you can get the paid curriculum here but great things on how to do, talk about conversations and have conversations at a deeper level so check those guys out they're doing a great job over there and i just want to say thank you if you are hoping to hear more from me this is the way to get a hold of me at leading ELLs or Twitter. And coming soon, I'll be doing a full length training 
on supporting ELLs emotionally during this time. Thanks a lot, and it has been a pleasure to be here with you today.